Welcome once again to another time for us to bless the name of the Lord and exalt his holy name. Even as we've gathered together this morning, I want us to thank him and bless him. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed. We are alive and well today. And it's not because we are clever. It's not because we are wiser. It is because of his mercies. So let's thank him this morning and say, Lord, once again, I thank you. I don't take my life for granted. I don't take the privilege of being alive and well and healthy for granted. Lord, I thank you. I worship you because you alone are good. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy to be praised. It is your goodness that has brought us this far and we return the glory to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King Jesus. I take us to the book of Psalm 19. Psalm 19, when we look at Psalm 19 and we read from verse 1, Psalm 19 from verse 1, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. When you look at the heavens, when you look at the firmament, you see the handiwork of God. You see what our God is capable of doing. We see how powerful, how mighty, how awesome our God is. And he says, day unto day, utters speech, day unto day, utters speech, day unto day, utters speech. It means every single day has a voice. And in the voice of the day, what is it that the day is saying about you? What is it that the day is saying about me? Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. What knowledge is being revealed about you? If you are a child of God this morning, the day must speak what God has ordained it to speak for you. And so I want you to begin to speak and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. This day, this 17th day of January 2021, I command you to begin to utter speech that is consistent with what God the Father has said about me. What Whatever God is saying about me this day is what is going to come to pass. Whatever the Lord has ordained for my family, for my household, and for the people of God, for the household of faith this morning, it is what this day is going to bring. I speak to you 17th day of January 2021, and I command you to speak the word of God over my life. I command you to become exactly what God has ordained you to be. Everything that my father has decreed for the 17th day of January 2021 I call it into manifestation I command the day to yield the increase that God has programmed into it I command the day to bring to pass what my father in heaven has ordained for such a time as this in the name of Jesus the Bible goes on to say in verse 11 in verse 7 sorry verse 7 of Psalm 19 it says the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. This morning, we are going to listen to teaching from the Bible. I want you to pray this morning because the word of the Lord is perfect. As they are teaching us the word of God, which is perfect, may that word convert my soul so that my soul, which is my mind, my will, and my emotions, my mind, my will, and my emotions begin to agree with what God is saying, begin to reflect what God is saying in my life and in the lives of my family members and my brethren all over the world. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. According to the word of God in Psalm 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. It has the capacity to convert the soul. Let the word of the Lord this morning, which is perfect, let it come and let it convert my soul. Let the word of the Lord convert my soul. Let the word of the Lord transform me. Let the word of the Lord convert my soul, convert my mind, my will, my emotions, how I think, how I reason, how I feel, how I express myself emotionally, how I express myself intellectually. May it be converted by the word of God, the word of God that is able to change me and cause me to become everything that God ordained me to become. Hallelujah. This morning, we thank you. Oh God, we worship you. We give you praise in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. It says again in Psalm 19 verse seven, it says the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. In other words, if I don't have wisdom, if I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, I don't know where to go with what I am doing. 
I don't know the right answer for the circumstance that is facing me. The Bible is saying that the testimony of the Lord is sure and is able to make wise the simple. This morning, as the, the, the Bible teachers will be teaching us, as the preachers are going to be preaching to us, they are actually sharing with us the testimonies of the Lord, which have been recorded in this great book called the Bible. As they are sharing the testimonies of the Lord, let the testimony of the Lord convert me. Let it make me wise. Is there an area where I am simple, where I don't have any wisdom? May the word of God come with power this morning and convert me and cause me to become wise. It says the testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. May I become wise. When you are wise, you know the right thing to do at the right time. When you are wise, you do not abort the blessings of God in your life. When you are wise, you don't resist the miracles of God, but you are in agreement with everything that God is doing and you begin to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May the testimonies of God transform me this morning. May they cause me to be wise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It goes on to say in verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes of the Lord, the law of the Lord, the law of the Lord has statutes. It has chapter, it has verse. And it says, they rejoice the heart. In other words, are you feeling discouraged this morning? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling sad? The testimonies of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, they make you rejoice. I want you to begin to speak this morning and say, I receive that grace from the word of God to begin to rejoice. I rejoice in God. I rejoice in Christ. There is no room for misery in my life. It doesn't matter the circumstances I'm in right now, but because I receive the word of the Lord, I begin to rejoice. I am being converted in the inner man and my soul is receiving capacity to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. It says the commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. I need enlightenment this morning. When I have the enlightenment that comes from the word of God, then it means that I have insight. I have revelation. I have a peculiar understanding of things that are around me. And therefore, I get capacity to prevail and to prosper. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, I receive enlightenment from your word. I will not stumble in darkness. I will not be that person who is confused, who is running from pillar to post. No, I receive enlightenment this morning as the word of God will be coming. I am enlightened. I receive enlightenment in the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. And then it goes on in verse 12 and it says who can understand their errors? Who can understand their secret faults? It says cleanse me Lord from my secret faults. Keep your servant back from presumptuous sins. Let them not have any dominion over me. Let sin not have any dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. I want you to pray for yourself this morning. The Bible says... Who can understand his errors? In other words, it's saying that you have some blind spots. There are some areas in your life that need correcting and you don't even know how to correct them because you're not even aware that it's a problem. I want you to pray this morning for yourself. Father God, concerning my blind spots, concerning my errors and my faults, those places where Lord, where I am making a mistake and I'm not even aware that I'm making a mistake. I am sinning against you and I'm not even aware. Lord, this morning, cleanse me from my secret faults. Wash me from those blind spots and that propensity to fall into sin in different dimensions. I am asking this morning for forgiveness. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me and wash me and let me be presented holy and blameless before the throne of God this morning. I receive forgiveness and I receive the mercy of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so this morning, our heavenly father, we come to you once again by faith in the finished work of the cross. We come through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach Tikenu, our divine high priest who died for us, who died in our place. We come through his sacrifice this morning and we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for what you have in store for us today. In the name of Jesus, we commit the rest of this service into your hands. We commit all the ministers, the Bible study teacher, the song ministers and the preacher of the word. We commit them to your hands, oh God. We are asking that you will speak through them, that through their mouths this morning, we will receive a word in our season, a word that will transform us forever 
forever. And that by the end of today's service, Lord, we will have numerous reasons to testify and to glorify your name. To you be all the glory, Father, and the honor. Once again, we take authority over anything that is not of God. We take authority over principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, and anything that emanates from the kingdom of darkness. We command them to bow to the name which is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in this service today. Let the name of Jesus be honored in this service today. And let the saints of God enjoy the presence of Almighty God. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brethren, and welcome once again to this morning's service. I hand us over now to our Bible study teacher, CJ. I ask that you pray for him even as he teaches, and I'm thankful to God for his life, and I know that God will use him. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. CJ, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Can, can everyone hear me? Just need confirmation. Yes, we can, CJ. Okay. Can um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, today Sunday school we'll be looking at the fear fear of the Lord. Um, it's a very very important message. It's a, a message I hope that will resonate within us. Uh, it's a message that I hope will also uh, get us to uh, reflect and also um, act uh, in, in in accordance with God's will. So if you remember. Um, If you remember our previous um, Sunday schools, we've, we've spoken about uh, uh, the spirit of fear and also dealing with fear. So those, those, those lessons looked at uh, fear in its literal meaning, you know, uh, the sort of fear that we have as human beings, the one that uh, um, causes us to sort of flee or, or, or run away from, you know, danger. That's the type of fear we looked at. Uh, but today's fear is a different type of fear. It's one that actually uh, uh, does the opposite. It, it, uh, it causes you to, uh, to rather than run, you're, you're going towards, you know, uh, towards someone. You're going, you know, towards your maker. You're going towards God. It draws you closer to God rather than draw you away from him. So uh, it's a non-literal meaning of fear that we'll look at. Uh, I, I pray that I'm able to, you know, put this message across and we understand it. Amen. So our memory verse um, is taken from Proverbs 1.7. It's a very short verse, but it's loaded with um, a lot of um, revelation. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's from the King James's version. The New Living Translation says, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So we know this um, verse very well. It's one, you know, often we hear uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And... Um, the, for me, you know, what, one of the when when I was reflecting upon it, I, I, I asked myself why why fear, knowledge, um, wisdom, and instruction are being put in the same sentence. I mean, fear is something; it has a negative connotation. So why then put it with you know knowledge? Because fear doesn't really drive you to knowledge; it makes you run away, uh, not closer to something to learn more about it. You know, wisdom and instruction as well so um it, 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 for me the one of the key messages i will talk through uh, some of the key messages from this this verse as well um 
so we know what fear is we've spoken about fear but this this message today is more about the non-literal meaning of fear which is that the um, a fear that we'll also look at in the intro introduction uh, a bit of explanation is given in the introduction well let's look at uh, knowledge and, and how it relates so in terms of uh what we're discussing today fear it's only when we know uh, we have a true knowledge of God. We have a true knowledge of our maker that we can understand fully why we have to fear, we must fear him. It's only when we, 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 we have a deeper re revelation of what God has done in our life, wh what he's about and his purpose for us that truly we will fear his greatness. Without that, people will always, you know, uh, I would say belittle, or even um, don't have don't place value on 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 how great our God is. So it's something that we also have to remember. Um, now that's what there's also um, in in this lesson text that the uh, the lesson text itself starts to tell us a bit more about God, but it doesn't really scratch the surface of who God is. So one of my message to us today is to go away after this message and begin to seek God, begin to dive deeper into who God is for ourselves and pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us through it. Because without the Holy Spirit, we can't really uh, um, get to know God. But another important factor is um, if you if you want to miss uh, a scripture that backs what I'm saying, look at uh, Matthew 7, 7. Uh, it is asking us, it tells us there to keep asking, uh, keep seeking and keep knocking. So it, it's, as, it's as simple as that. I know that it, the, the verse itself says, ask and you shall receive, but the literal meaning just says, keep asking, keep knocking and keep seeking. And if you keep doing that, God will continue to reveal himself, uh, reveal himself uh, uh, just in, in gradual steps on a daily basis to you. But first, you know, we must pray that the Holy Spirit guide us. And, and also we must give our life to Christ. Because Jesus in um, <clears throat> John 14, 6, tells us he's the way, the truth, and the life. So we can't get to the Father. We can't speak to him. We can't get to know God if we don't go through Jesus, if we don't know who Jesus is. We, we, and Jesus is God, man. So we also need to understand that. Um, and then... Uh, we look at wisdom. Now, the type of wisdom this verse uh, is talking about, it's not the wisdom uh, of, of human comprehension. It's not the, the one that we gather through knowledge uh, or reading or qualifications. It's not the one where, you know, someone is a professor of this particular, uh, 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 you know, so say, for example, a, the a theologian or a, a, a philosophy. Uh, so someone who studied philosophy so it's not that type of um wisdom it's not that type of um that's not the context we're talking, we're talking about the spiritual type we're talking about the one uh that is that is given to us by the the our maker the one who created and if you know the bible calls him the uh, he pre, that he predestined so he knows he's he knows the beginning in fact he is the beginning and he's the end so if someone knows your beginning and the end, you know, knows everything, how your journey will plan out, how your uh, life will plan out, then that's, that's, that's true wisdom, you know, because they, they, they're all in all, they know everything, they've created you. So that's the type of wisdom we're talking about, the one that is only found in God, uh, the one that allows you to make the right decision um, uh, at the right time. Um, that one that allows you to also um apply knowledge correctly and which is what wisdom is wisdom is the correct application of knowledge so it is is the one that allows you take this home the one that allows you to apply knowledge correctly and that is found in god amen so now we also look at uh, the instruction instruction just basically re uh, relates to the obedience of god's principles um uh, we remember that the kingdom of heaven, like we said, it's, it's, it's a kingdom. 
and every kingdom has principles. So we have to obey. So we're preparing ourselves for this kingdom and we have to obey God's principles. If we can't obey God's principles right now, what makes you think, you know, you, you're preparing yourself, you understand how the kingdom of God works. And that is also found in the word of God. So that's um, something we need to understand also from the, the, this uh, verse that we've read. Um, we also have to understand that the knowledge is free um, and the information is free. So uh, we don't have to pay anything for it. Jesus paid that price on the cross and we have the scriptures, which is, you know, uh, words inspired by God um, to guide us, to, to help us through our journey. So now um, one of the important things for us is now to understand, uh, the, is continue seeking God through these instruments, through what he's provided us with. You know, we have the Holy Spirit and we have the word which is all powerful. So we need to start using those, uh, you know, um, digging deep into those to actually understand who goes. And only then can we understand why we should fear him. Because without that, if you don't know who, for example, the queen is, if you could see the queen on the, on the, on the streets and walk past, or if you, if you don't know who, uh, just name a thermos person. If you don't know them, you could see them look at them, give them a handshake and walk past. But when you know who they are, you sort of, you know, um, have a high regards towards them. You know, you want to like, you treat them differently. And that's what, you know, we're, we're trying to, uh, I'm, the message I'm trying to relate to you, we, we have to know who God is. Um, so it says the fools despise, to put this in context, fools despise this, this thing we're talking about, the wisdom. They despise instruction. And what? who are these fools? Fools are basically people who, you know, God continue to reveal themselves, uh, uh, reveal himself to. And uh, pe people who, knowing who God is, they decide to pursue their uh, selfish agendas. They continue to pursue their selfish agendas. They don't, you know, obey you know, uh, they're not obedient to that godly principle. They, you know, place God in a very, um, in a, in a, they don't value God. Um, uh, those guys, those, those people are few, they're rebellious, you know, just like the enemy was, and they act against the will of God. So now you think about those, and I, I, I you think about people like that, and at some point in our life, we we fall into that category. So we need to ask ourselves, you know, you know, when have we been fools? And we need to seek forgiveness for that because uh, when we know God is an amazing thing to do. When we, you know, God reveals himself to, to us is an amazing thing and we should value that. So my key message today to take home is to ask ourselves as God reveals himself to us every day, we need to ask ourselves, where, where do we place God in our lives? What value do we place on God? You know, what? how high do we place him? Do we look at him in awe? Do we value him? Do we respect him? Do we respect, do we understand his, um, his, his principles? You know, do we just, um, you know, consider God uh, as we consider man? So ask yourselves deeply in our daily selves, where do we place God? Do we value him? It's one of the message I just wanted to put across because um, God is sovereign and we need, we need to know that. Amen. So going to, into the introduction. Uh, so the fear of the Lord is a reverential trust of God in addition to a constant hatred of evil. It is also an inward attitude of humble reverence towards God. Considering his self-revelation that, re that results in outward expression of Christ, Christ's likeness, you cannot serve God or keep his commandments if his fear is not in you. So we look at uh, Deuteronomy 6.13. talks about, uh, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. Uh, it also continues to say, however, believers should not be scared in honor in in horror 
of God, but see the fear of God as a commitment to life, to live our lives daily, respecting, obeying, submitting uh, to his discipline and worshiping him in all. So this is very, very important. Just this, this extract um, is, is a very powerful message. And uh, if you remember in the beginning, I, I spoke about fear uh, in a different context, which is what we're looking at today. Uh, it's a non-literal meaning of fear, is a, is a type of fear that is in Basque, uh, that is uh, encapsulated with love. It's not the fear that, that we discussed two weeks ago. It's not the fear that allow, makes you run. This, this extract explains the type of fear. It's a fear uh, that, that um, we basically, you, you're reverencing God. You know, you honor him when you, that, that you attach reverence, honor, uh, you're adoring God. That's the type of fear we're talking about. It's a fear that allows you to, to see him in high regards, to place him on the highest pedestal. Um, it, it causes you to defend God's, God and, and his principles wherever you are, you know, because of the belief, because of the, 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 the faith that you have. Um, it's also in, in that second bit that talks about it's an inward attitude of humble reverence towards God, considering his self-revelation that results in outward expression of Christ's likeness. So to me, one of the key things is, um, you know, there's the humility aspect. There's once you're humble. So it's, if you look at it, it talks about you being hum, um, humble. So that means you're surrendering yourself and you're placing God very high. Now, that causes God to then reveal himself to you. You know, it, 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 when, because you're in his presence now, you know, in, in humility, you're in his presence, you know, and you, you surrender totally to him. He reveals more of himself to you. He says he reveals himself to the weak, you know, not where pride is, you know, where people come with their own um, uh, wisdom and proud on, um, you know, their own, basically bragging. You know, God doesn't look at that. He looks at, you know, the weak people who are um, uh, humble before him. And when he reveals himself to you, you then see the Holy Spirit guide you a lot more. Uh, you see the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you. And then that causes um, you to start acting speaking and thinking in a uh, in a christ-like manner and which is where we what we want to do the christ in us and we in him this is what we're trying to you know we, we we're trying to get to every day of our lives you know making sure that we have christ in us and we are in christ so um i pray this will be our our, our, our lifestyle going forward from today in the name of jesus so there's an extract uh, in Colossians 1.10 that, that says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So this is what this type of fear causes us to do. You know, we walk in a, in a, in a manner worthy of God. We also... Um, do things that are fully pleasing to him. You know, we're in line with his will. Uh, bearing fruit. So that's you spreading the word of God. And that also um, others who you have ministered to also ministers to others. So you're spreading the kingdom of God on earth. Um, so it's an amazing thing. It's a thing of privilege. And just to summarize that introduction, one of the key things is that last verse that says, however, believers should not be scared in, in horror of God. So this, we should not be fearful in that sense of God with the, in the literal meaning of, of fear, but rather the fear of God, you know, see the fear of God as a commitment to live our lives daily, respecting, obeying, and submitting to his discipline and worshiping him in all worshiping in his greatness so um i hope this explains you know the fear that we look at today um 
and we've had a bit of understanding. Amen. So going into the le lesson uh, text and review. That's taken from Psalm 114 uh, to 10. I'm reading from the New King James's version. So he has he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nation. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and adorn in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and also is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. Um, so this, this, yeah. So this, this um, extract from the Bible, some in Psalm one 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 four to ten. Um, it just is something it's explaining, uh, like I said before, it's just giving us a, a flavor. Uh, it's just a little salt in, in your, in your food about who God is. Um, it's, it's, it's not scratching the surface at all of who our maker is, but it gives us, you know, it, 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 it gives us a, a, an insight into, uh, in, uh, on who God is in, and, uh, how great he is, you know, um, just going through those line by line, um, says he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Now, when we think about wonderful works, you know, normally we'll think about the things God has done in our lives, uh, you know, the amazing things. But to put this home, you and I are, are part of those wonderful works. The fact that we're alive today, the fact we are right in this moment, uh, even um, worshiping it and also like together through this platform is an amazing thing. It's, 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 it's a miracle. And that's part of every miracle is part of God's wonderful works. So that's one message I want to see yourself as a miracle, see yourself as part, God, uh, part of God's wonderful works. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. This is better explained, you know, uh, with the story of Jesus and the death on the cross. You know, his compassion was true. His compassion was shown. His full compassion was shown there, forgiving our sins. And, um, um, you know, wiping our sins away and saving us from death. He has given food to those who fear him. Uh, the food there is, is, is not the physical type. Is the spiritual type of food, the word of God. He has given that to us, uh, to edify us, to nourish us, to strengthen us, to give us encouragement, you know. So those, and it, this comes to those who fear him, those who actually humble themselves before him. Um, now, take, take this also that even though some people, everyone has access to that, in, in, in that uh, to the Bible, to the words in the Bible. No, not everyone fully in, uh, understands it, but when 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 he says God has given you the food, uh, that food is also um, not just the word, but also the Holy Spirit who also gives you the understanding, translates it in in, in this actual uh, in the right meaning. So it's a great thing that God has given us, uh, and we should not take it for granted. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. Um, if you go to Second Corinthians one, verse twenty, it says His word is yes and amen. His word is all, amen. He has declared to His people the power of His works, and then this the bit that says in giving them the heritage of the nations. The heritage there is, um, it's an inheritance. It's a free inheritance that we've acquired um, uh, by 
through Jesus Christ dying on the cross. It's an inheritance that we, we don't deserve at all. We do not deserve it. But it, it, you know, it's something that God has freely given to us when we accept Christ into our lives. We are, we are autom automatically adopted uh, children of God uh, who have inheritance to that kingdom. So it's something that we should rejoice about, to be honest, we should rejoice about it, amen? So um, says the works of his hands are verity and just, justice. So we know that God is a just God. Uh, all his precepts are sure. So precepts here is, is also principles. So this verse is telling us that all his principles are certified. All his principles are completely satisfied. And I use satisfied as in uh, in a in a very uh, slangish context. So um, uh, an example is, you know, I used an example yesterday, like Lewis Hamilton. When you look at Lewis Hamilton and someone says to you that like, Lewis Hamilton is a, a certified uh, Formula One driver, they're just saying that there is no denying that Lewis Hamilton is a very good Formula One driver. So now we need to look at God and, you know, God is certified. He's beyond certified. That just means that God is our all in all. There's no denying his greatness wherever you are on earth. Even if you're in the worst place or the, 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 or the worst place or you're in the most, you know, greatest and amazing place, there's no denying God's greatness. Everything it, are all wonders, uh, God's uh, works. That's the, the wonders of his works. So we should not deny his greatness, his surety, his, how correct he is. He's, he's, he, he's, like you said, he's the beginning and the end. So we should take that uh, on board when we try to, you know, as part of uh, uh, something, you know, a, a message that fires us up when we, when we go towards God, you know, when we talk about the fear of God, let us, let us use that to drive us towards God because it's a knowledge that everyone should know. They stand fast and forever and are done in truth and uprightness. He's honorable and he's un honest. He has sent redemption to his people. That redemption there is uh, the redemption of Christ, um, re redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has commanded his covenant forever. Uh, so with this, I just wanted to touch upon um, the covenant that we are in now. So we are in the new covenant, uh, that covenant that is through the, um, through, that we received through Jesus dying on the cross. Uh, if you go to Romans 6, 14 to 15, tells us that we are no longer under law, but under grace. So we are under grace through the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross. Before that, we, you know, we were under the law. And imagine how, uh, you know, how difficult it would be if we we're under the law. How many rams and sheep, animals would have slaughtered by now, you know, just to appease God. But no, uh, you know, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, was shed once and for all, and we are free from doing all those things. So it's a marvelous thing that God, could, you know, had so much compassion and he loved us so much that he would, he would, you know, free us from all this bondage. Amen. So the next verse says, uh, holy and awesome is his name, the fear of the Lord. And it talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all those who do his commandments, his praise endures forever. So, there where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, we also have to see it as a, a, a criteria, you know. Uh, so the, one of the criteria is to attain wisdom. Uh, true wisdom uh, is by having that fear of God. One of the, the so take that on board. Um, one of the criteria is to be able to obey God's instruction is also by having the fear of God because you have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit afterwards. Amen. So going into our lesson outline, uh, why is it necessary to fear God? Now the lesson outline is very uh, self-explanatory. So I'll, I'll cover it uh, as much as I can. So it's asking why do we think 
we should fear God. It says we are commanded to fear God. It's a command um, in Psalm 33, 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Um, so we're commanded to fear the Lord. Uh, be why? Because of his holiness. Um, he is holy like, you know, we, we saw in the, in the uh, lesson text uh, that we can find in Revelation. Um, his greatness in, in 2 Kings 17, 35 to 36, says, with whom the Lord has, had made a covenant and charged them saying, you shall not fear other gods, nor bow down to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power and outstretched arm, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him shall you offer sacrifice. So that's telling you how great God is, that you should not worship other gods. And other gods doesn't mean that you have to find one, you know, carved whatever, or, you know, a tree or whatever. Other gods in, in the context, in the modern context, could be, you know, anything that you put um, at the forefront um, or anything you put above God, I would say. So it could be jewelries, it could be excessive holiday, it could be whatever it is that you just consider uh, when, it, when, it, when it comes to that thing, you just lose yourself and you put it above God, you forget to consult God. So be careful that we're worshiping small gods out there without knowing it, you know. Um, so for me, you know, <clears throat> we have to understand the greatness of God, that God comes above everything and we should understand his will for us. Uh, the goodness also uh, is one of the reasons. His goodness uh, says in First Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord. And serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. When you want, um, you know, when we talk about the great things God have done for us, you know, uh, this song, this that song, "We Are Great," is coming into me right now. You know, uh, "You Are Great" uh, by Sinatra, uh, amazing song. But yeah, <laughs> so we need to understand, you know, how great God is. The fact that we are alive. Our families are alive. We have provision, uh, protection. We have a roof over our head. We can even think we have our, you know, we're able-bodied. Just think about the the, 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 the things that we normally wouldn't uh, think about uh, when, we, when, we con when we consider the good works of God in our life. Just think about those little things. You know, the fact that we even can, can come together on, on Zoom is a great thing. It's a great thing we see each other's face. It's a great thing. So we should thank God for that, to be honest. Uh, his, 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 the forgiveness, so um, God's forgiveness without, without which we would all have ended up in hell. That's, that's very clear. That's very simple and clear. We would have all be perished. So we know that. Uh, and it's something that we should be grateful to. Uh, I also added love, the love of God for us. It's, it's an amazing love. It's one that cannot be matched. You know, we can't be match it at all. So God loves us so much. And if, if you look at, uh, you know, one of our favorite verses, John 3, 16, you know, he loves us so much that he gave his only son to die for us. And that's the greatest sacrifice. And we need to then ask ourselves, um, you know, knowing that, that is the type of God that we have. You know, um, how do we reverence him? Where do we see him in our life? One of the important things there to note that you have to remember the, the enemy, the devil, was a chief cherubim. And he himself rebelled against God. Look where he is. Look where he is. But God loved us so much that he didn't just send his son to sacrifice, uh, to, to die on the cross and save us. He also adopted us after that and gave us that free inheritance. Like, just, just think about the pro prodigal son here, you know, that you've been, you've been wasteful all your life, but yet your father who's in heaven comes and, 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 and just takes you and say, look, 
you you you're bound to die but you know what you're not going to die not on my watch what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you back i'm going to clean you up and i'm going to give you all the inheritance that you never deserved in fact you have access to everything just think about it you know you know just have you ever watched nigerian movies where you know some people just um they outcast their sons and daughters just for little things. You know, they don't even speak to them. Some of them haven't spoken for, for years. And in, in, in real life, not even in the movies, in real life. So just think about it. You know, people have family members uh, that they don't, they don't speak to. They don't even, they don't know how they are at all. You know, even brothers and sisters don't even talk to each other. So just when, as a Christian, just think about those things. Say to yourself, reconciliation. You know, how am I treating those people? Because God has done this for me as well. You know, pray for them. Even if they're hard to talk, pray for them. Because that's also another way. Amen? So we look at the, the fear of... So he's asking, the fear of the Lord is also necessary for worship. So that fear, again, like we spoke about, is one of humility. is one that draws you towards God. is one that... Uh, where you're in total surrender and you, 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 you're worshiping him all. So it's that fear causes you to worship God in the right way, to worship, you know, see him for, for how great he is. In Psalm 5, 7, it says, but as for me, I will come into your house with, in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards, in fear of you, I'll worship towards, towards your holy temple. So that's, you know, one we should take home uh, for fear of the Lord also helps us in our service for him. When you fear God, you serve him. You, you want to serve him. You know, when you know his greatness, when you know the, the sacrifice, his compassion, you know who he is. You want to serve him. You want to serve him diligently. Amen. To keep us from sin. So, Anchoring ourselves to God, you know, automatically, you know, separates us from the enemy. It, it, not even hides the enemy cannot see us at this point. You know, once we anchored uh, um, ourselves uh, to God, to godly principles. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is always with us, and the Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will, you know, just um when we have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, everything that comes out of us, everything that we speak, do, or even, you know, think about, it's uh, in accordance. We're in line. We're aligned with God's will in our lives. So we should also take that on board. Because um, what the enemy, you have to remember, what the devil is looking for is to, you know, distract us from the presence of God. And then, then he can, uh, you know, inflict us with whatever he wants. But, that's not our portion in Jesus' name. For administration of justice, he's a just God. For governance, for good governance. So think about anyone in, in a leadership position as well. Where for you to be able to, you know, have good governance, for you to be able to lead, for you to be able to rule, you know, give the right, um, make the right decision, you need God. That's why we also have to pray for our people in, in, in authoritative position and leaders um that they you know they're god fearing when you're god fearing you your your thoughts and your decisions are god led people might not, may not understand it but god does and that's that's sufficient amen for the perfecting of holiness in our christian lives uh because of coming judgments against which there is no appeal Again, uh, I say to you there, don't leave it too late. Um, now is the time to act. Let us, you know, continue to dive deeper uh, to understand who God is so we can fear him, we can serve him, we can worship him, you know, like he wants us to. Amen. Um, the outline to... What are the benefits? So, this this I will run through. Uh, you know, is is very you know uh, self-explanatory. Uh, so, what are the benefits of having the fear of God in us? Uh, 
And we just look at, you know, some of the benefits. Uh, the fear of God brings pleasure uh, of the Lord, which in turn brings blessings to man. Um, we can find that in Psalms 147. Uh, verse 1-1, one, one. there's another, another verse there, Psalm 1-1-2, one, one, verse 1, just write this down, take, take it home and look at them, uh, just so we, you know, because of time, um, but these are, these are some of the verses we need to look at for, uh, in, 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 it gives deep knowledge and wisdom against sin, so the fear of God allows you to gain you know, it is like it says, is the beginning of wisdom. You have the deeper understanding. So once you fear God and give your life to Christ, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which causes you to now, you know, um, dig deeper. You start to get the deeper meaning of the scriptures, uh, not, not not the literal what people are, are, are saying to you, but you dig, start to dig. You have that hunger and desire to, you know, know who God is. Uh, it is a unique weapon against sin. We know that the the word the word of God um, the word of God is a sharper than a two edged sword. So we know this already. Uh, so it's, it is a weapon that we can use to fight our battles. It's a weapon that we can also use to, you know, um, go into yeah to go into battles, uh, uh, spiritual battles, I say, and just uh, to 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 protect ourselves as well. Amen. It brings protection yeah, for believers and their loved ones, man. It makes a man acceptable to God. So when you fear the Lord, uh, you, you, you become, when you humble yourself, you know, when you, when you surrender totally to him and you're ready to die for him, you know, you become acceptable. God, when you're acceptable to God, God can reveal himself to you. So you look at Acts 10, uh, 35, it says, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteous and works righteousness is accepted by him. And we also remember Romans 12, 1 that says, uh, uh, present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, worthy, and acceptable. Um, so we also need to look at those scripture. Um, it brings down his mercy this is in acts 10 35 uh if you ever want to you know understand the mercy of god upon our lives you have to fear god because when when a mistake when you make a mistake or when you you know backslide that's when uh god will show you mercy god will show you that once you go back uh, and 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 confess your sins amen it brings long life. The long life we're talking about here is that everlasting life, which is what we hope for. You know, we look forward to as Christians. So, you know, knowing God and having that fear leads you towards that path. It brings answers to prayers. If you want your answers to be, uh, answers to all your prayers, continue to fear him. Don't just fear him once, twice. Continue to fear God. Continue to love him. Continue to, you know, uh, uh, to surrender to him, uh, continue to reverence his holy name. Amen. It brings separation from evil. So this, just that fear from God, like I said, anchoring yourself separates you from the enemy. You know, what I'm, oil cannot mix. So we know that there are things that are just not acceptable in the, you know, in the kingdom of heaven. So we also have to, as Christians, understand that those godly principles, when we abide by them, when we continue to fear God, continue to, you know, uh, seek him more and more, we're essentially uh, separating ourselves from, you know, lossful things because the, the, the what, what do they say? The, 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 the house of the father, the, 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 I think the will of the father consume us. I can't remember the actual scripture now, but uh, it talks about that, you know, that, that basically to paraphrase that the, the godly principles, his will, the, the house, the things for his house, let it consume you, let it, um, uh, let that desire burn, continue to burn in your heart. Amen.
So it brings confidence uh, to you and it guarantees true riches, honor, and life. Amen. So in summary, I, I like what I, the message I like to put across, it says that there are numerous blessings for those who fear God. But one, one thing I want to put across, one, one take home for us is to, you know, when we go back to that message in earlier, that key message, which is um, now that we know a bit about God, and uh, from what we know of him through our Christian journey, where do we place him? Where have we placed him before? Where are we placing him now? And where are we placing him in the future in our lives? You know, what value do we give to him? You know, what, um, how do we see God? Do, you know, do we, do we, do we consider him? Do we see him for his greatness? Do we truly understand who God is in our life? So ask yourself those questions because it, it would help you in, 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 in your journey as a Christian, whether you actually want to continue seeking God. Uh, uh, so let, let that be the message that, that we, for us, that we ask ourselves this, that will lead us, because hopefully it will then lead us towards the, uh, fearing God. It will also lead us towards, you know, on, um, having that true love for God, you know, being able to surrender completely to him when we understand how great he is in our lives. And to conclude, fear the Lord God Almighty. Love the Lord God Almighty. Cherish him, adore him, reverence him. And I pray as we go into the uh, ministration, the choir, um, that we will worship him in truth, we will worship him in spirit. Amen. Uh, just to close off, I'd uh, like us to bow our heads uh, while I say uh, a, a small prayer. Father Lord, I thank you, I glorify you and I exhort you. I thank you for this message. I thank you for your blessings in our life continually. I thank you for your <clears throat> grace. I thank you for your compassion towards us. I thank you for this moment in time, Father Lord. And I pray, Father Lord, as we've gone through this uh, lesson that talks about the the fear of the Lord, that your fear, Father Lord, that fear that talks about um, submission, that talks about love, that talks about um, that talks about surrendering to you, Father Lord, will consume us, Father Lord. And as we go into this um, ministration, Father Lord, that we'll, we'll use it to worship you. We will worship you in truth, in spirit and in truth, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh,